That's his tail and there's his feet. Just ate a moth or a wasp. Vincenzo having an afternoon munch on a good fine Sunday. Happy Easter to everybody. If you celebrate it. And here is the new table of knowledge. Well, I said to you guys I was going to put PMHs around the wheel. And this had to be done in order for it to have PMHs all the way around it. Simple build. Woo! Know how to scare myself. Simple build. I wanted to show you how I'm setting this up. So to get a nice circle around the wheel, uh, I was thinking, how do I do this? And I took a piece of aluminum strip and I first measured out. Um, first, I started thinking about the coil. And from what I showed you guys and from what I've learned is that the center of the mass of the core would be the center of the coil if the coil winds go past the center of the length. If you wind say from here to here, and you don't wind this section here, then the center of mass becomes in the two ends of where you wind. So basically that's how that um, strength, that magnetic field will be stretched out, but the strength will be in the center. So if we wanted to have a good reaction to the magnets here uh, we would, if we wound so basically I'm cutting straight bar just like this half inch thick I think it's three inches tall and I'm going to cut lengths and put them all around it comes out to where the lengths are going to be five and a half inch lengths and we'll take a half inch out for a quarter inch. Each side would be the spool. So that leaves me, um, leaves me five inches of spool. So that'll put the magnetic field strength in the middle right here. So if I wound that whole length. So what I want to do is shorten that length up. The problem is... This is what everybody has to deal with when you're designing stuff. Is if you look at the gap between here, how many turns of what gauge wire that I'm going to be putting there. For instance, if you look at this set up here, that's 22 gauge and that's I think 1250 turns. So if you were to look and say, okay how much space is left in between them. You'll see that what you're limited with as far as space. So I'd be able to go a lot further with these. You can think about at least out here. So um, if that's 1,250 turns and I'm only a half inch thick on the belly side and the top, I'd say I'm a good three eighths inch thick, maybe half inch, you balance it out. So half inch, if I can go another half inch, I can get another 1,250 turns on it, right? You would assume. And um, by doing so, you had a lot more resistance. So I have too much resistance in here, but what, one thing good about the thinner wire is you create higher voltage. So we'll talk about that down the road in the array of the wheel. So it makes sense, right guys? You guys agree? Leave your comments. It makes sense. So on designing it, 
you know, we're going to do a couple things, which is if uh, every other one of these is going to have um, be part of the driver and every other one of these are going to be a pickup, which is also a feedback to the driver coil, <laughs> which, which, this is going to blow your mind, which is going to be set up in segments, four segments, sort of like the cloverleaf. One, two, three, four segments. And these segments are going to be set up in three phase, A, B, and C. Okay, instead of them being A, B, and C, it'll be each one of these groups here of two is going to be a PMH. So the PMH will be A, B, and C. And then you get four of those sections around. So we'll sort of mimic what you see here in a washing machine motor, but it'll be flipped the opposite way. Right here, the stator is on the inside, the magnets are on the outside. These are all set up in, in series of three. And of course, we'll need a driver to drive it, which will <clears throat> no problem have it set up with a driver. So we can reach slow, fast, on command speeds and constant speed. That's the key. I can't rely on magnetic fields to have a constant, especially if you're trying to do one of the projects would be, would be to um, create a system that taps into the Schumann resonance in the ground. Um, uh, with that, it would uh, detail in detail, the pipe in the ground, which would act like a satchable reactor, which would be um, having a constant DC, which would be the sort of connection from the electrostatics, because the electrostatics are two different types of polarities. <clears throat> well, it's, it's one energy, but it's gathered up as two different plates, so there's two different types of energy separated and that energy is created through the grounding system underneath the pipe which doesn't touch the pipe only the center core touches the pipe the outside of the pipes electrostatics which is the inductive coupling that i'll make to go to the ground so the ground will have an inductive coupling it won't be grounded to ground because once you ground the ground then you're you're, you're not able to create a satchable reactor. It has to be isolated from the ground, except for the core. So the core in the pipe, and then the coil around it, will be the satchable reactor, which is grounded to only the system. So basically as a satchable core that doesn't touch the earth, that goes down in the ground, that is in the middle of electrostatic field you follow me and here's your electrostatic the electrostatic will come from the buzz box coil so you can put 12 to 24 volts in this <clears throat> that's tar by the way and you create a um, oscillation back and forth and you can see how this right up front there See that right there? That's a point. And the um, the core, look at that core, is little rods. Look at them all. They're like little welding rods tied. So there is your laminate core in the inside of this wound with real thin wire, thinner than that, to bring the voltage up. And there's your electrostatics. So your electrostatics through DC gets fed back into the upper, the upper and lower part of the um, the grounding system, 
and that grounding system will have a dielectric uh, two-fold set up underneath the ground and will have the same thing on top of the ground on the, this pipe. And this pipe will also have the identical setup up top, which I'm using just glass right now, but it'll have an, a, a two-part dielectric. So the reason I came up with Oh my God, what the heck? What the heck? Not on Easter, not me. Woo! So, the dielectric um, up top will be split to where I'm creating a monopolar situation. So it's not a dipole, but it's a dipole in a vertical and a horizontal. Um, if that makes any sense to you guys, I knew you guys that, that are deep in would know, is a vertical and horizontal dipoles, but they're also uh, um, dynamic to where they, can change like horizontally or vertically. And that's what this creation here is. And it's what tunes to the earth in a, in a loose coupling. And it all starts from the, the, the AC um, flipping poles from the wheel turning. And the wheel's speed, in order to create a tap say to the Schumann resonance, which I'm gonna to have to draw this out and you guys are gonna love this. I'm gonna put a, a, a cardboard, my next job next week when I get back to collecting cardboard, cause I'm a little full right now, I'm gonna put the cardboard up and I'm gonna show, see the ground would be the halfway point, a negative would be below the ground as a, as a U. From the ground up would be the other U. So that'd be the positive, that'd be the negative energy looking at it. So if you look at the table, the table is sitting on the positive side, but the um, wheel would be turning at a speed of how this inductive uh, high static, high pressure inductive with adding your kinetic, your um, strong magnetism of the iron that will be in the core, but also in the casing, so it becomes a satchable, will be controlled D, it'd be controlled AC by using small voltages of DC. And I believe that's why Ed had that DC motor sitting in the backdrop. But what I want to get into is the fact that the ground provides the back EMF, which is the ground is just like any other thing you hook up. So if you create a circuit, and for instance, if I say I have these two big, beautiful, beautiful chubbies from Walmart, paid $72, I think, and they're deep cycle, 12 volt batteries, right? Nice deep cycles, two of them, brand new. It was time, I destroyed the other ones. But they held up good, and may it rest in peace over there. It still works. But it ain't got the juice. So if you, whatever power you got. So basically I got, each one has what? I don't know, 900 cranking amps, 1200 cranking amps times two. And if you go 24 volts, what I'm getting at is whatever you hook it up to is what allows the current to come into the circuit. For instance, this right here is thinner wire. So it would... Um, Basically, with 24 volts, they would start to warm up because these cannot handle the current. But it knocks the current down because of the resistance that's in here. So they're going to get hot, okay? Uh, for other instance, is this 14-gauge magnetic wire on here. I know that this length of wire, and using Ohm's Law, that I could take the um, 
the voltage and divided by the resistance and I can tell the current that it can handle or the current that it's going to have and the current that it can handle based on the diameter. So using the smarts about building this, you have a three phase, very, very lot of torque, very little, very little uh, energy going in because it'll be spread out through the whole thing. Not to mention the reaction because we're also going to have the, the tickler feedback. Love you, honey. The tickler feedback will be providing and dumping a capacitor into the wheel. So the wheel itself will have a variable adjustable capacitance that's getting blasted into these coils and it could be done in, in, in individually it could be done as in series or two of them in parallel to the rest it, it can be done it, it, it it's wide open don't know where we're going but i'm just saying this. this is the best i've ever took this wheel and just the fact that this is all calculated and we're going to know what we're going to get out of it Look at that. The shaft turns beautiful. Working on a sleeve that's going to go over that. That's going to control the points. Points will be set up better than the wooden block. Everything just temporary to get her working. I got it spinning really, really good. And I already shown you off of one side of the PMH. I got really, really good power. So now it's time to really bring down the, the the amount of current that goes into that to run the wheel dramatically and bring up the um, the usage. And the usage won't be through the means of the wheel. The usage will be through the means of the electrostatic coupling that's going to the ground. So the ground's going to provide two types of energy. It's going to provide a positive and a negative. It's the same energy. So but basically what we're going to do is create a, which I didn't explain yet. I get off this damn phone. Uh, the, the bottom is a dipole. The top is a dipole. And I have them reacting to where the top and the bottom on, say, each side is flipping. So not only they flipping, when this becomes a positive, that side is at its negative. So they're kind of attracting and creating a dipole this way as is that turning. And then the backside is flipping or the, or the backsides are stationary and the front side's flipping. So the bottom and top is already flipping their poles and they're, and they're flipping horizontally this way and they're flipping vertically. And we're gonna pull off of that to where we'll have Sign across, flipping, and we're going to have a pickup that's going across here and have a positive and a negative on each side. And I think whatever you put on it, as far as what I was saying earlier, how you design, basically that nodule sticking out of the ground becomes what these batteries are, but unlimited amount of free power. Peace out. This is a lot of, a lot of. So how I got the circle, I stretched that out, measured the length with a good quarter, uh, quarter inch gap. Wheel's not 100% turning perfect, but it's the closest I ever had it. That's how I got my outside rim. All these bars will be uh, welded to the outside rim, and each one of these will have their coils. These coils will be set up in um, in uh, in a A B C fashion, to where um, they'll be running off a um, of a controller. That'll make this a three phase dragged out situation. It's unbelievable. Very little resistance on that wheel. Very little. On that um, wheel barren, the wheel barren barren sitting on a thrust barren. 
So I, not only do I have the weight of the whole wheel sitting on a thrust baron, I got the wheel turning on a axial baron as well. And look at that. So once you put metal in front of it, you know, right now it's reacting to that metal and this metal. It should slow it down even more. It would have kept turning if I didn't put the metal in front of it. Leave your comments.